So stocks trade in a range, just like the market does, but individual stocks do too. And when I say stocks trade in a range, if the stock is going up, that's fine, but it doesn't go straight up. It goes up and it comes down and it goes up and it comes down and it trades within a range, whether it's going up or whether it's going down. And as long as we understand that stocks trade in a range, we need to understand that they move up faster than they move down. So as I said before, it may take three or four years for a stock to go up, take one year or less for it to come down. It may take three or four months for the stock to go up. It'll take uh, one month, a few weeks for it to come down. So moves up slow, comes down quick. Think of a roller coaster. When the roller coaster is going up, click, 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 very slow. When it's at the top, it slows down. And then when it starts to go down, it goes down very, very quickly. Perfect example of how that works. Now you have the potential to profit when the market moves in either direction, depending on whether you trade long or you trade short. We know that. Now most people simply trade long because they are thinking, well, the market always goes up. But as I said, let's get a little bit more specific. This is 110 years of the market in front of you for the Dow. We know that they've changed the companies inside there, which is one issue, but which years were you in the market? Were you there for 110 years or was it just 10 years or 20 years that you were in the market? So let's get specific. So let's take a look at the years 1900 to 1920. Now when you look at that chart, it looks very volatile. Up and down, up and down, up and down. This is as our country is developing, things are happening, the Dow 30 isn't even in place yet, but we can see that it's very volatile. Lots of opportunity to make money. And they were also fixing the rules as they were going along. Let's look at the next 20 years. This is 1920 to 1940. Now that's the roaring 20s. We've heard that before. Most of us did live during that time. You'd have to be 90 plus years old to have lived in that time. But as you take a look at that during the roaring 20s from 1921 to 1929, the market moved up dramatically, a huge move up. Then in 1929, we had the stock market crash. We see a severe move down. And then over the course of the next few months, it dropped down huge. 90% was lost in the market. That's why people were truly upset. Even taking their own lives, they were so upset. Talk about emotions taking over. When you look at that chart, very, very dramatic. But when you look at the larger chart, it was just a little blip on the screen. So now let's take a look at the next 20 year period of time. Let's go from 1940 to 1960. So what happened there? 1940, we were in war. 1945, well, now the war is over and things are changing. The market flattened out, then it started to move up. And during the course of that 1945 to 1960, it was a massive move up. And then what happened? 1960 to 1980, now we're back into wars. We've got Vietnam going on. We've got uh, the love generation going on. We've got all kinds of things happening in our country where people are wondering what's going on and who's who and what's what. And the market was incredibly volatile during those times. So when were you in the market? As a matter of fact, most people really didn't get into the market until the 1980s. And when they got into the market based on mutual funds and retirement plans, they just put money in. They didn't really know what they were buying or what they were doing. They just said, you know what? This stock market is a vehicle for us to fund our own retirement plan. So they loosened up the rules. They allowed us to start to play. We now had things like online trading come available to us over the course of this time and the market boomed. When you have a lot more money being poured in, chasing the same number of stocks, more money drives the price of the stocks up. So during those 20 years, it was a massive move up. So were you in the market at that point in time? And if you were, that's fantastic. But now let's take a look at the year 2000 to the present. Again, massive volatility. And you see that big move down about halfway across the screen. That's that 2009 the March of, the April of, the market low right there, where the market hit a high in 2008 of over 14,000 and then went all the way down to 6,600. We're just looking at the Dow right now. But you can understand the emotions are flowing, the market is volatile. What years were you in the market? And if you started in the year 2000, you had a nice move up, but then you had a severe drop on the way down. And where are we at today? We're back to all time highs. And I started by sharing with you that we haven't had a correction of 10% in 700 plus days. That's getting on two years where we haven't had a correction of 10%. So for the market to move down 10% or 1,500 points on the Dow, it's expected. It's the norm. What's that going to look like in cool trade? When you're looking at your screen, what are you looking at? 
So before I show you that screen again, let's talk about the cool trade philosophy. Number one, we're thinking about trading stocks for the long term. Doesn't mean we're going to hold them for the long term, but we want stocks that we know that are going to be around for a while. In addition to that, we're best off trading stocks that are trading in a range for long periods of time. A range that we can see very clearly, like when you look at Microsoft, I think it's a great example, where it trades in just a beautiful range and then every once in a while it's a little higher and a little lower, but then it's back into a beautiful range for long periods of time. We want to trade stocks that have a volume where it's trading actively at least a million shares a day. And that's because the spreads will be smaller. In addition to that, when I want to buy, I can buy, and when I want to sell, I can sell. There's a lot of people out there today, not you, cool traders, but there's other people out there that like to trade penny stocks. And penny stocks are really stocks that are under $5 a share, but today it's considered under $1 a share. But there's even penny stocks that are fractions of a penny. And people do that because they're saying, I can buy 100,000 shares for $100. And they think this is a good thing. The problem is, who are they going to sell it to? If the market isn't the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, there's not a ready market for those shares. So they're dealing with a broker in between and it's just not a good thing. But here's the key, you need to be prepared, and this is one of the philosophy linchpins key points right here, to have money available to buy on pullbacks, on corrections. If you've got the money available to buy, that means we can add to our positions. Now when the market goes down, the red is going to appear on your screen. That net P&L, that number is going to get larger and larger and larger. Because if you bought the stock at 30 and now it's only trading at 27, it's worth $3 per share less. But if you've got money on the side, that may be a beautiful time to go ahead and buy another 100 shares of that stock. So we're buying it as it goes down. And that's a key point. And again, I'm back to the red here. This is a real realistic training right here that we're talking about. What happens not if, but when the market pulls back, corrects, even a large move down, a bear market. What do we do? Well, first, make sure you understand what it is you're going to be seeing. Your screen, there's going to be red on there. It's going to be a negative number. Money management, you need to understand it, need to use it. First is you've got money available to buy those stocks on the way down. And as it's going down, I, I want you to be thinking about that. It's not that the stocks are on sale, but if you liked it at 30, you should like it even more at 25. You should like it even more at 20. You know, right now, a little side note, gold and silver are way down. There were people that were happy to buy gold at $1,800, and now that it's at $1,200, they're like, I don't know if it's a good thing. So you're willing to buy it at 18, but you're afraid to buy it at 1200. Now that's interesting because they own the gold right now that they paid $1,800 for and they don't want to buy any more at 12. Doesn't make any sense, but that's exactly what they do. So we need to understand that we need to use this to our advantage. And with Cool Trade, the great news is it does it for us. It books the profits consistently. So we're going to enter. We're not really concerned with where the stock is at that moment. We're going to get in the game. We're going to enter that trade and we're always going to be buying and selling. We're going to enter. We're not going to put all of the money in at once. We're going to put our toe in the water. We're going to buy some, and when it goes up, we're going to lock in profit. When it goes down, we're going to buy more, add to our position. And if we start to put this philosophy together, let's add to it, trade stocks of good quality companies. Notice I put quotes around that. When we say good, what does that mean? Just go with the usual suspects. If we start with the Dow 30, these are companies that have been around for a long time. They've got revenues and profits and they report to the public. I'm not looking for the latest and greatest. I'm not looking for the home run. I'm not looking for the one car dealership, whether it be Tesla, right, or something else that's going to come today and I don't know if it'll be here tomorrow. I'd rather be trading Ford because it's consistent than Tesla because it's unproven and it's new. So good quality companies, and we're going to open positions by putting your toe in the water. And what that means is you're not going to put all of your money in at the beginning. If you can afford to buy 1,000 shares, start by buying 100 shares or 200 shares. If it goes up, terrific, but if it goes down, we can buy more as it moves down. So don't invest all of your available funds when you start. Add to your positions on predetermined pullbacks and corrections. And that's again where Cool Trade comes in because when you tell Cool Trade to do this, you're telling it what to do. So you could program in there when it drops 10%, buy more. When it drops another 10%, buy more. When it drops another 10%, buy more. Now it can only do that if you have set money aside to actually execute that trade at that time. And you're going to lock in the profits as you go along using the LIFO, last in, first out. 
So if I bought stock at 30 and 25 and 20, and now it goes back up to 30, the first stock that's gonna get sold is the $20 a share. Last in is the first out. That concept itself, all a part of how Cool Trade works and does it automatically for you. That's why they call it robotic trading.